This is an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar on the basics of editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to organize clips in the timeline. The last thing I want to talk about today is how to organize and customize the timeline. Specifically, I want to show you how to select, move, copy, and delete clips, the power of the option key, which we've already started to explore, what happens when you control click a clip, how to add markers and labels, how to change timeline settings, and a history panel. And let me show you how it works. To select a clip, make sure you're on the move tool and click the clip itself. Hit the delete key to make it disappear. To duplicate a clip, hold the option key down and drag it. To move a clip, grab it and drag it where you want it to go. Notice that when I move clips, just the clip I'm dragging changes tracks. Here I want to have the audio go below it, so I'll hit the option key, option drag down, sorry, option to select, then don't hold the option to make a duplicate. Grab here, hold the option key down to select it, let go of the option key, then select the entire clip and drag it where you want it to go. Remember, clips on higher layers always block clips on lower layers. We can stack clips as many high as we want. I'm going to select the option key, stack this up here, so now I've got a three-layer stack. Clips are always full screen until you change it, so by default they're full screen, which means that if you put three clips on top of each other, you'll only see the clip on the highest track. To delete a clip, highlight it, hit the delete key. If you have a gap, say between clips or at the start of the timeline, highlight the gap, hit the delete key, and the gap is removed. If we copy and paste clips, that's where these settings come in. If I select a clip and copy it, Command C, then change the setting after I've copied the clip. When I paste it, the clip will paste to the lowest number of these blue that exist. So for instance here, I've got V1 and V2, and I changed it after I copied the clip. Command V, it pastes to the lowest number track that's illuminated. V3 is the lowest number track. If I select the audio, backslash to fill the frame, well, even though the audio is empty, let's just select this, copy it. I want to paste it to A3. It's the lowest number track. Goes at the position of the playhead. If I light both of them, if I light all three of them, whichever these, the lowest number track that's blue. This side determines how clips edit from the source monitor to the timeline. This determines how clips are copy and pasted. It does not affect editing. It does not affect trimming. It only affects after you've copied a clip. Then you change that blue box. The clip will paste to the lowest numbered box that's blue. This allows you to turn on and off sync. We don't use that because it's easy to use the option key. This makes a track invisible. This mutes an audio track. This solos an audio track, and this allows us to do a recording for, say, a voiceover. We'll set this back again. This is all part of the track header. Customize the timeline, click the three-layer pancake, and you can customize it. If we control-click on a clip, there are a number of options that we can work with. Enable makes a specific clip invisible rather than everything on a track. And the other one is set to frame size. If you're working with still images, always set to frame size, never scale. The rest of these, the defaults are fine. There's a lot here. We can look at the help files for it. But the only ones I want to point out are enable and set to frame size. A marker is like a yellow sticky note. And if I type, put the playhead where I want the marker to appear, there's the marker. Double click it, and I can call it my marker. And you can change the color and click OK. And now, notice as you hover over it, it gives you the name of the marker. To change the position of the marker, drag it. This is where Act 1 starts. This I need a shot replaced, bad audio, wake up. This is where I need to start tomorrow. Double click a marker to open up the dialog. To delete it, click the delete button. The other thing we can do is to control click on a clip and go back down to where it says label and I can change the color of a clip. I'm not saying the colors are pretty. 
but you can definitely change them. So for instance, I could make all of my dialogue orange and all of my B-roll purple and all of my titles blue. There's default colors for many of these, but you can change them by selecting the clip and applying labels. Finally, the last panel that I want to show you is the history panel. If we click this double pointing arrow and go down to history, this is everything you've done since you first created that project. You can, it's like an infinite level undo. I want to go back to here, or I want to go back to here, or I want to go back to here. It takes me back to wherever I was. You can, of course, undo with Command Z, but the history panel allows you to go backward really quickly. And then as soon as you make a change to the clip, all those things you skipped over are gone. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on the basics of editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 282. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.